Hello, I'm Ken Coles, Executive Director of Farming Smarter, and welcome to the October 1st edition of our Plot Shots. So it's a gorgeous, beautiful fall day, about 20 degrees. In front of me, I'm checking out some of our winter wheat trials with Dr. Manasa Makabella. He is leading a, a Western Canadian effort to study fusarium graminarium. Uh, fusarium head blight is, is a big issue. So in this study, we've got three different types of winter wheat, as well as we'll have some spring varieties as well. He's collecting lots of different information as far as weather stations are concerned and also uh, spore loads. So I think the idea here is we're going to try to fine tune some predictive modeling approaches to understand when fusarium is coming on and when we have to consider management strategies. So a really cool overall plan. It's, it's nice that it's extensive across Western Canada. We ourselves this year at Farming Smarter now have three locations, one here in Lethbridge, in Tabor and in Medicine Hat and there are all other cooperators across uh, all three provinces participating in this trial. So right now October 1st we got a nice uh, establishment already. We're already coming into our second and third leaf stage here. It's quite dry this fall but we did have a nice uh, rain event right around the time of seeding, the mid middle of September. So it would be nice to have a little bit of rain to help sort of finish this off but right now I'm pretty happy with the establishment that we've had and uh, we'll see how things overwinter this year. Next year will be, I think, the third year of this study, and you should look to find some, some interesting results with, with the trial. But otherwise, you know, winter wheat, always a big fan of winter wheat in general. It's sometimes having that offset in maturity might actually keep us away from fusarium head blight up here in Canada. Whereas down in the US, head blight is now quite adapted to a winter cereal. Where up here it's kind of a bit of an advantage so so that's a plug in for winter wheat moving forward so here i am checking out some of our grain corn trials uh, this is part of our strip tillage study where we're looking at two different heat unit of uh, grain varieties as well as the use of strip tillage versus non uh, direct seeded and the the whole premise here is that we're trying to find seeding dates and methods that are suitable for southern Alberta. So we know corn loves heat. Getting a, a grain corn variety to maturity for harvest uh, is, is a bit of a stretch with our growing season. But you can see here we've got a variety that, that was seeded at a reasonable time. We're almost getting close to grain harvest now, October 1st. Lots of times we don't uh, worry about it until we get our first frost. We haven't had a significant killing frost. So you can see the plots beside us here are still quite green and, and coming into maturity. But they're, th these are two varieties seeded three different times, strip till versus no till, and a huge difference in maturity level. So we're gearing up for harvest on this trial, and we're looking forward to, to the results. As far as a dryland grain corn crop is concerned, though, this is amazing. So we did get really nice moisture this year in the spring. Um, I think that's one thing that people don't realize is that corn is actually quite drought tolerant, and... I, I'm going to predict that our, our best yield in corn is going to be well over 200 bushels. So can you imagine a 200 bushel crop on a dry land scenario? It's going to be a, a very profitable crop. So, so as we sort of integrate the management and the agronomy of growing grain corn in southern Alberta, trials like this will help uh, determine if, with it, whether there's a benefit to strip tillage and whether we can push the boundaries of when we seed. So, you know, a lot of times we need to seed early in the spring, but corn likes warm soil temperatures. So can we warm that soil up with a strip tillage approach? Okay, so here we are at our novel crop sequencing study. And behind us is a, is a quinoa trial that we're getting ready to harvest. We have desiccated it. This is a, this is a new crop. A lot of people have heard of quinoa and eat quinoa. We're trying to figure out what's the best way to integrate this crop into our current rotations here in southern Alberta. So you'll notice here there's a lot of weeds. We've got kochia issues within this treatment and really what matters is what was grown here last year and even the year before. The reason we're here October 1st getting ready to harvest um, is because we purposely seeded this quite late and that's because there's not a lot of herbicide options with quinoa. In fact it is sort of a weed itself. So we delay seeding to be able to control the weeds with a, a pre-seed burn down ahead of time. That ends up making it a pretty late harvest. So I know some farmers have already harvested their crop, but we've been uh, sort of learning by experience that in order to get a clean establishment, two things are really important, that later seeding date, but also the crop rotation. So you can see very visual right here, the, the kochia that's involved. I'm gonna take you to our, our next plot. And I think 
what was here last year was canola. You can see right off the bat, we've got a much cleaner stand. So the, the problem here though, is that we actually have a quite a light stand and canola leaves a lot of volunteers. Last year, we ended up having an early snow in September. So lots of canola volunteers ended up being quite competitive with the quinoa early on. However, you'll notice we don't have the kochia. If we move to the next crop down here, we've got a much thicker stand. So again, a nice clean stand as far as quinoa is concerned. Most farmers would be super happy to have a field looking like that. And now we're just waiting for dry down, try to harvest it, find out what the yields are. And with that information, we should be able to give some good advice as to if you're gonna try quinoa, which is a tough crop to grow, you're best to grow it after this crop or that crop. So look forward to that information and in our presentations down the road.